from now. Okay, who would like to go next? Uh, Dr. Hussain, can I do next, please? Okay, Dr. Ahmed. Can I? Thank yeah. you. Big doctor. So what is your station, dear doctor? It, it's, it's drug-induced mania, uh, but I don't know which one. Is it in the booklet? I, I know the normal mania, but I don't know which okay. one is the, the one you meant. Okay, I will put this the station in front of you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will start. Uh, the, is it ninety seconds? You can take uh, four minutes if you did not find uh, any uh, material. Just can take four minutes, and also for all the candidates, just to have a look about this look of this station, which. The score in this station is not as good as it should be, according to feedback from the from the colleagues. So just have a look. So what's the source, uh, Dr. Hassan? Is there a source for it? Can't you see the material in front of you? I can see it. I mean, uh, if we can get it, like, is it in SPMM or something? Well, I don't remember from what did I get this material, oh, whether oh. it's from the SPMM or from another source. OK. Thank you. So what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm ready, Dr. Hussain. So ready? Did you read the material, all of it? Uh, know the story. Should I read the rule player? I know the story, man. The like, this is a chance to get accustomed to this type of stations. Read of it. Just get. <laughs> okay, this is a chance to put yourself as much as possible in the uh, mood of the station. Read the role players. You have three minutes, okay. no problem. Okay, thank you.
he ready for minutes of pass. Okay, yes. Okay. One, two, three, go. Hello, I am mm -hmm. Dr. Albasuni, one of the psychiatrists. Um, uh, can I get your name first, please? Well, you don't look you don't look like an a native English. So, can you tell me more about your nation? Are you married, doctor? Where are you from? I, I feel I feel that I can travel to the place which you are uh, living offer, as far as you can give me a good idea about. Can we continue the discussion somewhere else, maybe in in a Starbucks coffee or something, which can be more comfortable? I'm not comfortable in this. Uh, coffee in this place, doctor. Is it okay just to have a coffee with you? And we can answer all your questions together. Is it okay, doctor? Well, I'm, 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 I'm here and I was uh, uh, asked actually by the team uh, to come to your home and to do such a conversation for a kind of assessment. So can we have a chat please today and then we see how we can go okay, further? Okay, doctor. Okay, doctor. So this is a nice okay. watch from where did you buy this watch, doctor? And see that you are wearing a nice watch. I prefer to. I would like to have a, a watch like it, please. Okay, and, uh, and that, did, did, well, is there any particular brand which you prefer? I, I decided also to you know only wear brands because you know this can reflect my personality. Mm -hmm. This is something okay. which I'm interested in to, in doing lately. Um, I, I don't think okay. that there is something okay. wrong in this, and and this is what makes my husband furious. He doesn't understand. People change, doctor. He doesn't want to mm -hmm. change, but I have changed. And also my, my daughters don't understand this. They, they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. They think that they, I must be like them, totally devoted and, and drained in mm -hmm. my house. No, I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done with this. I, I, so I Mrs. have to live my life. If you don't mind me interrupting you, I'm sorry for that. I, I can notice that your speech is a bit... Fast is it your movement? No, no, because I feel that that you, there are a lot of things which I should say to you, and and you have limited time, and yeah. I understand that you might maybe you okay. have been given I a would... wrong idea about me. So I'm trying. Well, thank to you so you much I'm... for telling me. It's thank you so much for telling me. And yes, I'm I'm definitely interested to know about you. But can you please do you mention something that your daughters and your husband are concerned that they don't want to change? They, they think that I'm spending too much. Concerned. It is my money. It is my money. It is my life. Okay. It is myself. I've decided yeah. to, as I mm -hmm. said to you, to buy brands from clothes okay. and watches. And I, I decided to travel. Okay, I took a bank loan, but it's still okay. my responsibility. Okay. I'm mature enough okay. to take the right okay. decision. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you think that you, you, your energy is a bit increased at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that I, I, I need to live, you know. I, I feel that I have been, you know, okay. strained by whatever has been there in my life. I cannot move okay. properly i used to have parkinsonism but now um, i can move more okay. properly and i can okay. go out and do you take medications properly. do you take medications for parkinsonism? yes i'm taking the medications and recently i feel more, much better actually can you tell me about them i'm taking something levodopa something like this I, i'm not okay. good with the names of the drugs okay and you are you taking it regularly yeah yeah, yeah i'm taking it regularly okay when was the last time you reviewed the doses? This was about doctor? two weeks ago because I had some tremors in my hand and I was more slowly okay. in my okay. uh, gait. Any so changes easy. that happened? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago? Yes. What happened? Yeah. He increased the dose of levodopa. Okay. So how long you've been feeling yourself like more energetic and This was about two more? weeks about two weeks, two weeks maybe two weeks ago uh, yeah. days and the... is it also that you speak a bit fast is it also in the same time well they, they everyone is commenting about but but i don't think that is okay. something which is you know major okay 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 so but can i ask you about your sleep how's your I'm, sleep at the moment well i sleep only two hours three hours maximum two though hours. i do a lot of effort okay i feel that I how about your eating do you eat I'm well? eating well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're but you well. know, I decided also to eat, you know, particular 
good food, you know, in a good, healthy okay. food. Okay. What about your daily function? Do you work? No, no, I, I don't work. Um, no, work, okay. Work Do you business. drive? I no, but I no. decided to buy a car. Yeah. You decided to buy a car. And uh, who gets your groceries? Do you go out and get them? Yeah, yeah, I can go. I can go. To you can go. Okay. Have you yeah. noticed like being a bit like impulsive in the past two no, weeks? No, no. No? Okay. Uh, any kind of like uh, 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 neglect in your taking care of yourself? No, 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 no. 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 Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, but can I ask you, please? Uh, do you take any uh, alcohol? No, no, no. I, I don't drink any uh, street drugs. No, no. Uh, uh, so can I please ask you about, like, do you have any other medical conditions other than Parkinson's? No. Okay, so uh, I have uh, understood so far from you that in the past two weeks you, you were uh, with the neurologist and increased the dosage of the Parkinsonism, and it has been uh, 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 some concerns about you regarding your energy. You're talking about one minute remaining. You, you sleep less. Uh, did it happen before similar things? No, no, this is the first time. Okay, have you had any episodes when you're feeling low in your mood? No, no, no. Do you have any thoughts of harming yourself? No, 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 no. No, okay. So, Mrs. Uh, uh, can, uh, uh, I can see from what we've discussed so far that you're having uh, symptoms of what we can call a drug-induced mania. And this actually can be caused by sometimes increasing the dosage of the levido by the medication that you've taken for your Parkinsonism. And we would like to have another... Doctor, what you. is the problem? What is the problem of being happy, doctor? And I'm going. I want to live my life. Well, there is definitely no problem, but we're concerned about other things like increased energy and being not yourself. Uh, and we're concerned about this would affect your health and would put you at risk, actually. Time, time, time. How do you feel about what you did? All in all, it was not bad. So how do you feel about what you did? Well, I think uh, the 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 patient was a challenging first, and then actually, yes, like, yes, I yes. asked about the name, and I didn't get the name. I should got it. Yeah, it was not yeah, the, uh, should get the name. And I had a problem. Yes, and I had a problem at the end not having the yeah, name. So. Uh, I got the history. I got the medication. I got that it's uh, Parkinsonism, levodopa. I asked about drugs. I think maybe. Um, I excluded yeah. depressive episodes, risk. I think more about risk I could ask for. I did formulate it. All in all, it was problem. fine, but pay attention to this subtle communication. When someone, particularly a mania, who is uh, talking, 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 uh, just count five seconds. He only has seven minutes and call the patient by his name, Mrs. X. I can see that, but don't pose questions as if you are at this interrupting him by your sentence. This is not a so good five seconds and then just, ask. just but because I will not give you any information. I'm just talking I'm out. You cannot okay. say that I'm giving you a meaningful information. I have just elaborated that I have pressure of speech and also flight of ideas. So it is what it is quite clear that uh, you will not get anything from hearing what I'm saying, but you already established that there is some psychopathology behind this. Just give mm -hmm. me five seconds and interrupt me by calling my name. You waited too much in the beginning and I was okay. afraid that you might lose the station because I talked too much and you left me talking. Number two, okay. uh, uh, when I said to you that expenses, this is a sort of risk, so tell me more about these expenses. Pay attention to this. Mm. Number three, mm. pay attention. I want you to show that you are a professional doctor. So this picture can be associated with, with what? If you are very clever, with someone who is 65. Frontal or uh, demen dementia, dementia can be an early sign. You just ask a simple question. So have you been more forgetful lately? Okay, particularly that dementia is associated with Parkinsonism also. So, oh, okay. can you see? So, 
I want you to show that you're professional, okay? I, I, I'm not like anyone else. I know that dementia can be there, okay? It's not only about medication. There can be another uh, problem. So uh, have you been more forgetful lately? Just one question is enough. Uh, other than this, it was good. And if any one of our colleagues has any feedback, um, they did not give you any feedback so far, but it was very good for me. It was good, very, very good. So let's see. Thank you. The, the, according to. Um, so introduce yourself in a very good way, but pay attention that you should ask about, know the, the name of the patient. Okay. And you can use what you have read in the station that these, uh, her uh, daughters are worried about her. And you just take permission that you want to discuss these concerns. And then mm -hmm. ask about the complaint, okay? Want to know what is the current uh, problem. And then when she is talking, definitely you will pay attention to the pressure of speech, the flight of ideas and the high mode, okay? show that you paid attention to this and this is something which you did and then you ask about the onset the course and the leadership but please always ask about before the onset so before two weeks how were you doing any stresses any change in the medications which which you did to some to great extent okay and then you ask about the symptoms of the mania everything was okay and then the comorbidity, everything was okay, except for the memory. Please, doctor, don't forget the memory. I want you to be um, distinguished. Mm -hmm. This is something which they can just forget. Parkinsonism is associated with memory problems. And also the, uh, uh, also the, the old age is associated with memory problems, as we all know. And then you ask about the risk, you said you ask about the driving, you ask about the alcohol, about pay attention to the expenses because I've already elaborated that I have a problem with expenses. And then the past uh, history and family history. Did you ask about this? And have you ever seen a psychiatrist? Family and just pay attention to this. And then finally you deliver the diagnosis and justify it in a good way. Let's see according to the mark sheet. But before, let's see the feedback of our colleagues. Grandiose delusion, why grandiose delusion? Grandiose delusion. Yeah, they asking if you, you should have assessed the psychosis. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Um, so let's see the priorities. Yes, you said the priorities that she has mania and the mood and the different aspects of history, the information given to you and the main headings of the history, you have covered them. So point two is going to be scored. The symptoms of the mania, you have covered it in depth. Uh, risk assessment, you have covered this in depth. Sufficient attention to the patient's health view. Um, well, at the end, you've discussed with me what, uh, and you've paid attention to what I'm saying. So this can be also scored for you. Does not pay is appropriate. You asked about the psychological and the social information. I think this also uh, is going to be covered. As for the communication, I didn't feel that you have missed any point. Everything was good, very clever. Have we ever been to the task before, Dr. Ahmed? Yes. Okay, very clever, mashallah. Okay, thank you, so much. thank you. So I hope that you found it helpful. Yeah, and then, by the way, so just, just by the way, drug abuse. Um, the, there are some for nice. Just, just whenever you want to refresh your memory about the object subject of the station, don't go for the textbooks. It would be a waste of time. Just have a look at the images, in the Google or whatever the source. Of, and uh, one of the most important thing which you should pay attention that the most common drug which causes drug induced psychosis is corticosteroid. Uh, it's not the uh, levodopa as we think or um, just cortic because the corticosteroid is the most commonly used medication. Levodopa is limited to those who have Parkinson's. Okay, thank you so much. So who would like to go next? I can. Yes, yes, you can. 
mine is temporal lobe epilepsy. Okay. There's a clean temporal lobe Yes, come. The full. One minute. Yes, I'm ready. Hello. Hello. So just give me five Hello? minutes. I have a patient. Give me just five minutes, please. Okay. Okay.
Sorry, doctor, for this interruption. Sorry. So we can start now. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, hello, Mr. Thompson. I'm Dr. Zainab, one of the mental health doctors. How are you doing today? I'm fine. So I've been asked to come and talk to you about some of the difficulties that your brother, uh, Mr. Johnson, is uh, experiencing recently, such yes. as some strange episode. So would you be able to tell me a bit more about what's been going on? Well, it, it started about three months ago. We don't know what's going on with him. Uh, he has these strange times in which he starts to act weirdly. I have this, got this with my uh, GP. He said that we must talk with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, since when, uh, like you mentioned that since last three months, this has been going on. Did something in particular happen before three months? Like what? Um, I understand from the notes that he was uh, he had depression and he was started on some medication. Yes, yes. Okay, so do you think that after starting the medication, all this has started? I don't know, doctor. I don't know. Okay, and uh, can I just ask how many such episodes have been there since till now? Well, I think in the beginning it was once every ten days, and but with time it is increasing, and and then it is now maybe three or four times every week. Mm, it sounds difficult. So, uh, have you like you? It sounds like you have witnessed him when he had such episodes. So, yeah, do yeah. you have you observed any anything unusual when he when he has this episode? Maybe any movement around his lip. Yes, okay. yes. He, no, he acts weirdly, doctor, and he does not respond when we uh, call his name. And, and, and he does strange uh, features by his face. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what happened after having this episode? Well, after that, it, you know, he just appears as if he is not, you know, totally uh, attentive and he says that he wants to sleep, maybe for 30 minutes, maybe one hour, and then everything is okay. Okay. Have you seen him maybe confused after this episode? Well, sometimes he's just a bit confused, but it doesn't last long. Okay. And uh, has he ever lost his balance? No. no. Or any injury he sustained? Yes. Any no, no, injury? no, no. No. Okay. And have you observed any other abnormal movement, like any movement in his any sh sh movement in shoulder or anything? No, just just not responding. Sometimes he walks. Sometimes he walks. Sometimes you know he moves his hands aimlessly. Just weird okay. things during the time which is abnormal. And do you have any idea about his past? Like as a child, has he ever had? Any uh, fits with fever? No, no, no. Or any history of uh, fits in, in, in his past? No, no. Okay. Any other medical condition that I should be aware of? No, no, he doesn't any have any. Any infection or any... Excuse me? And... Uh, after having this episode, have you noticed uh, uh, he passed urine or stool inside in the cloth incontinence? No, no, he never or did any, this. Or any tongue bite? No, 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 no. Okay. And uh, does he drink alcohol or any other street drink? No, 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 no. He's, just, he's a very decent man. Okay. And anyone in the family who has any history of fits? <coughs> no, no. Okay. And I understand from him that he's having this mild learning disability. So does he work? He, he just works as a manual worker. But because of okay. this problem, he left the work about uh, one month ago. Okay. So it sounds like this episode has affected his work life. So uh, yeah. in work, okay. And what about, uh, does he drive? What? Does he drive? No, he doesn't drive, no. Okay, and okay, and from the notes, I also understand that he was on uh, some medication, dorthiapine, for his depression and for his sleep difficulties. Yes, yes, yes. So how is he sleep now? Is he able to sleep properly? Yes, with the medications, he sleeps while he's taking his medications. 
Okay, what about his mood? Well, his mood is fine. He has, his mood is fine, but this problem is not making him, you know, very, you know, um, I think he's a bit frustrated because he left the work, but his mood has improved in comparison to what has been going on before. Okay. So, Mr. Thompson, from what you have told me, it seems like he's having this um, uh, diagnosis of the temporal lobe epilepsy. But temporal. however, in, to confirm this, we have to do some blood test, some scanning of his brain and EEG. But uh, it seems like the medication dothiapin, be, uh, since he started on this medication, he started having this kind of strange episodes. It sounds like this is because of dothiapin. But okay. don't worry, we have uh, uh, the team, multidisciplinary team in this hospital is there to help him. So what we would do is we will change his medication from dothiapin to some safe alternative medicine, which will which doesn't have this side effect of uh, this uh, temporal lobe. One minute epilepsy. remaining, one minute remaining. And uh, it's good that he, it's better that he don't work till he get better. And we would okay. also recommend him to stay away from water bodies and uh, not to, you know, operate any heavy machineries. Okay. Does it make sense, Mr. Yes, Thompson? yes, yes, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much for talking. Thank, to you, me thank you, thank you. How do you feel about what you did? So, it was I good. Think I so, have left, I have left. Okay. Give her, give her your feedback. Yeah. Can you just mute your mics, please, doctors? Okay, so let's see the feedback. So uh, in the beginning, it was very nice that you picked up that he has been taking medication and you checked it, but I, I hope that you just established that the temporal relation very early. So you wanted, to, you should also uh, did this uh, change in the medication happen before the onset of these uh, seizures uh, for how long? Just establish, show the examiner that you paid attention, that you picked it up. Okay, mm. it was a bit disorganized because it should have been, uh, you know, this very simple. Ask about the pre ictal symptoms, ictal symptoms, mm. and post ictal yeah. symptoms. Pre ictal and post ictal, very simple. Okay, um, psychosis did not ask about the psychosis, uh, ask about the self harm. He didn't ask about the self harm or harming anyone else. Yes. Uh, that's it. And at the end, don't ask about the management. Management has no place. You wasted. Don't talk about management. Management okay. has no place. You wasted time. Let's see the neuron. Just see what neuron did not get. Okay. Let's see according to the uh, temporal log. So. Okay. So. Uh, Introduction, you did the introduction very good. The complaint, you took the complaint and uh, wanted to know the onset and then the course. Is it increasing its time? How many attacks per week? Very good. And before the onset, you asked about it very good also. But I hope that you, sh you should have shown that you picked up that there has been a change in the medications and this can be the cause behind it. And the major problem is here that you should have asked about the uh, the symptoms, the ictal symptoms, post ictal and pre ictal. Okay, mm -hmm. very very important, very important. This is how it is. It's all about this. And during the ictal, ask about the particular symptoms which are common with temporal lobe, like lip smacking, chewing, swelling, movement. And then ask about the grand mal seizures and if he, there's been falling injuries, incontinence or soiling and biting his tongue. Okay. <clears throat> and as usual, the comorbidity are the same questions in all the stations. The questions about the mood, the psychosis, and the social questions, the physical questions and the impact with coping and risk. The past history and family history, good that you have asked about 
the possibility of having a family member who has epilepsy and then finally delivering the diagnosis okay so let's see the last time i'm going to see the mark sheet so the mark sheet here you did identify the issues and priorities the aspects of history covered them but unfortunately point number three might not be scored for you because we didn't cover the symptoms efficiently the risk has not been covered efficiently um you you were you shared me the conversation so point number five is going to be scored for you the social information you did not cover uh, it was not very structured and you involve the management steps so manage the it can be poor management of the consultation because it is not your task it was not very fluent so also the points number 11 and 12 might not be scored for you because they are related to the language okay again it's not a boss or fail maybe the examiner will evaluate you in another way but just you should know how to use this mark sheet pay attention to it. it's all about the mark sheet whatever the, your source is make sure that you revise according to this mark sheet this is what is required from you thank you very good very clever doctor. thank you, thank you would like to go next Nuran uh, requested to do the next station. Nuran have requested on the yeah. chat. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Is it from CMM um, lesson five, topic six, right? What what the, what is the station she are going to do? Dissociative stoop. Okay. It is the only, it is a single, but there's no other dissociative students. Yeah. One. I'll just put it on the wall. Good evening. Do you see the station? This is the station. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. You will have uh, just four minutes to read your notes and arrange your thoughts. Okay.
Okay, ready? Yeah. Very clear. One, two, three, go. Good afternoon, Mrs. Graves. I am Nuran, one of the doctors in the mental health team. My understanding is that you're here today because, because of your daughter, Annie. She was admitted yesterday to the medical unit after collapsing. Well, I, I don't want to be a rude doctor, but I, I thought that I'm going to talk to a physician. Um, she has yeah. collapsed. I don't know what, why am I talking to a psychiatrist? Yeah, Mrs. Graves, I understand where you get from. The medical team has done all the investigations for Annie, and it has become clear, thankfully, so far. So it's very common to refer to a psychiatrist to look for any psychological causes that can happen. So do you think we can have a little chat around she, that? She, she is not crazy. No, it's not what I'm saying, but sometimes there can be some psychological background. You know, body and mind are interconnected. So when we are stressed, we can feel sweating. We are embarrassed, we can blushing. So a lot of the bodily symptoms can really have a background of psychological causes. Does that make sense to you, Mrs. Graves? Yes, 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 doctor. So, well, uh, 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 I would like to answer all your questions if this is going to be helpful. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. We are all as a team are here to support Annie. So can I ask you about the collapse? What happened? I don't know anything, doctor. Her colleagues called me and said that they have seen her collapsing in, in, in the... Uh, LA of the of, of her college and that's it and they took her to the emergency room that's it I don't know anything else um I'm really sorry for that happening and was this the first time yeah this is the first time for her to do this doctor and she's she, she's not talking and she's not responding to me yeah I can see how this can be distressing to you Mrs. Graves and we are here to support you and look how best we can do that. So, so are you familiar? How, has she taken any injuries during the collapse? No, no. Do you know where any odd movements were there? No, no, no. Or incontinence? No, 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 no. Could be any possible stressors linked to the collapse? Well, I don't know what do you mean by stressors. Any anything that can be stressful or distressing to her, anything that can be beyond her ability. Well, we, we all the family has been stressed lately, doctor. We are we are passing oh. through a difficult time. Oh, what's happening? What is it? Something which is very embarrassing. One of our family members has been accused with pedophilia. We are all stressed. Uh, I feel that she she is more she is more stressed than all of us, and, and I'm really worried if if he has done anything to him. It seems very difficult time for you and all the family. And you mentioned that Annie is the most stressed. Why? What do you mean by that? She, she's crying most of the time, and, and she's she's isolated. She is not eating well as before since this problem for how long now that she shows such such low mood and decreased appetite since about four days after the onset of after we received the news four days so and so is that related to her contact with her uncle was she on close relationship I with don't, him I, I, I don't know doctor I mm -hmm. don't know anything about her childhood with him? No, no I, I, I don't know. I, I, I've never discussed this with her, but I'm really worried. Do you feel that this might have anything have happened? Well, that's very important concern, Mrs. Graves. I can't really confirm it or not, but I think it's very important to explore that in the future. What do you think? I don't know, doctor. So I think when when did you discuss that with any 
apply anyway with any i didn't have the time but you know it happened four days ago and today i i'm receiving the news i i, I don't know what to do doctor well, I hope that you know that we are here as a team to support you and support Annie when, whenever that can be. And um, can I just ask you some more questions to know what's struggling for Annie? Yes, yes. So can you tell me about her as a person? How is she usually? No, she, you know, she has been a very, you know, very fragile person, you know, uh, and she always avoids any problems and she is not the type of, you know, of a bully person. She's just a very decent person. Yeah, yeah. And some people, when they have stressful times, they can cope with alcohol. Is that the case for her? No, no, no. No, or drugs, street drugs? No, no, no. Has any been with any contact with mental health services before? No. No. Or any medical any medical problems? Well, no, doc. Do you feel that she's going to get better? Well, hopefully she is. Um, it's really different responses from different people, but usually with commitment with treatment and follow-ups, very good responses that we are waiting for. So what what do you think could be struggling for Annie? Do you have any I idea? Don't, I don't know, doctor, but do you feel that she's faking these symptoms? Well, absolutely not. Um, some psychological stressors can be very intolerable that came out as bodily symptoms. And as this actually a diagnosis for Annie. So she has what's called dissociative stupor. Have you heard about such a thing no, before? What is it, dissociative stupor? So dissociative mainly means being detached or unaware of their reality and stupid being unresponsive. So I think that's what, what mainly for any now, right? Yes. So that's one of the psychiatric problems that most of the... Time, psychiatric... time. time, time. How do you feel about what you did? And alhamdulillah, um, thankfully that I managed to, to do the diagnosis and history. Um, I'm not sure if the management plan should be, should be discussed as well. So I ask you well, most of the questions. Yeah, well, the task is, let's see what the task the task says that take brief history and explain her to her the diagnosis. And most probably you will get some questions which we are going to discuss in this station it will it will be a dialogue most probably she yeah. will post questions to you and you must be ready with these questions okay so the first thing is that you should show empathy this is very important and uh, just show empathy i felt that it would be formal number two why am i talking to a psychiatrist just make it brief understand your query however the mind and body are one unit so it is common to have psychological causes behind the physical symptoms, particularly if the clinical assessment and investigations did not show any abnormality. Just one sentence clear that she has some sort of psychological problem be behind these uh, these uh, these symptoms. Okay. Yeah. And then what is wrong with her history taking? Okay, we know the steps of the history. The first thing, uh, you take the complaint. You want to know the current situation. The complaint is the rule of, of the complaint. You know what, you want to know what is the current situation? How did you find your daughter? Okay, did you see her? She doesn't talk, she doesn't respond. So you want to know since when did she start to have these symptoms? And how was she doing before the onset? Now you know that the picture is a picture of um, dissociation. So in your mind, we all know that the most important thing in the dissociation is to know what are the stresses which is heavy. So before the onset, were there any stresses? And don't get surface with what I'm going to say that there has been some sort of problems with her uh, uncle and so on. You want to know if there are any other stresses. 
And this is a mistake which the candidates do not pay attention to. Maybe she has emotional problem with her boyfriend. Maybe she has financial, she has what educational problems. Okay, you don't know. We want to know more about what are the stresses in the different areas in her life. Okay. <clears throat> now, the symptoms of the syndrome, you want to establish that there has been a abnormal mental state and the stresses. The stresses, you can cover it in the beginning before the onset. One minute, please. Okay, let's return back. Sorry for the interruption again, though. Just with you. Okay, okay. Sorry for the interruption again. So, uh, so you want to know before the onset, and uh, you want to know about her personality. How was she doing before the onset, and if she is was using any street drugs or alcohol and so on. And you want to know now the symptoms of the syndrome. You want to know establish that there is a disturbed mental state secondary to severe mental stress. This is the symptoms of the syndrome. Again, what the step wise? You take the complaint, current situation, the onset. Before the onset, you want to know how was she doing before, the type of personality. If she has been doing any recreation drugs, any medical problems, those history. Okay. And then symptoms of the syndrome, the mental state. You want to know that she has had a, an abnormal mental state and there has been a stressor before this abnormal mental state. And get, don't get surfaced by what I'm going to say. Show the examiner that you know that there can be other stressors. As I said, there can be educational stressors, emotional stressors, not only the problem of her uh, with this uh, man, okay? Okay, and then you ask about the risk. This station, doctor, is not a typical history station. It can go also as management station because she is going to ask you many questions about her, the management. So it can be history station and management station. But I feel that it, it is more as management station because as you, you will see that the amount of questions which she's going to ask you according to the feedback of our colleagues which are related to the management. And then after asking all her questions about the symptoms of syndrome, you explain to her that it is a dissociative stribber. Uh, she will ask you if she is faking these symptoms, show her that it is because of the severe distress and these symptoms are out of her control. What does it mean that the investigations does, do not show anything? Tell her that these symptoms are secondary to her psychological problem, not because of physical problem. Uh, what could be the reason for this when she is stressed? And this question, which makes the cans a bit puzzled. As you can see, it is related to her psyche, psychological problem, psychological uh, reaction to the stress. You can say something in the lines of there are factors which can make this disorder more common. It is more common among young females. Those with history of child trauma or contact with mental health services also with lower level of education. We know that these are the common factors of which make the dissociative stupor more common. Is she going to get better? This is also a common question. We know that around 80% of the patients who have dissociative stupor get better. What treatment does she need? Okay, in the beginning, she needs some sort of care and uh, just to make sure that she is medically stable and then she's going to take the CBT. And I'm just, I'm not going to go through details of the management, just a few words about that she needs CBT and she needs some sort of support to make her eat and gradually she will improve. 
How can I help her, the family role? It's very important, emotional support, helping her to follow up in the treatment plan is very important. Also, your feedback to the treatment team is very important. This station, the POSEN grade, according to the, the candidates, which I know is not high because, as you can see, a lot of questions are posed here. And, and many questions the candidates find it difficult to answer. And that's why the passing is not high. It's not very, it is not 100% management station. It's not 100% a, a history taking station. This is what you are going to get in this station, okay? Uh, I know that a bit confusing, not that the usual type of stations, but here it is in the PDF if you are interested, if you are, if you know, have a, a, any other source to answer this question, no problem, but you must be ready to answer these questions. I hope that you found it helpful, Doctor. Okay, thank you so much. Who would like to go next? Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Santos, Dr. Santos, Hi. how are you? I'm good, thank you, Doctor. Very glad. You? So what is your station, Doctor? Actually, Dr. Nidisha Bajaj, she said that she won't be able to do it. So uh, I'm going to do this schizophrenia, autism, and LD station. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Schizophrenia. Okay, you can read the material. Yeah, I'm ready. Ready, mashallah. Okay, ready. One, two, three, go. Hello, I'm Dr. Kumar, one of the intellectual disability doctors. Uh, uh, how should I address you? You can call me Robin. Robin, how are you doing today? Well, um, I'm, 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 I'm very aware of what I should do, doctor. Uh, I know, I know who, who wants to uncover me and, and that's why I shouted to this lady. But, but, but Michael, the key worker, did not understand my job. Uh, I have a job, though. I, I have a, a job. Mm -hmm. Robin, I can see that uh, you want to do something. Can you tell me more? Doctor, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an unco undercover uh, agent, and, and we have an opposition enemies, and they want to uncover my job, so I must mm -hmm. prevent them from doing this. They want to uncover me, so I, I stop mm -hmm. them. I know them by, by the way they look at me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Robin, uh, when did you first realize this? This was about three months ago. Okay, did anything in particular happen three months back? Well, well, the, the, they started to send for me the assignments through the, the, the television. Mm -hmm. All right, and how things have changed since then? Well, since then, they, I, I get assignments from the television. I sit in front of the television and the news anchors give me the assignments. Okay. Robin, I can see that uh, you have uh, too much at this moment. So, uh, do, uh, means apart from you, who else believes that you've got these assignments and you are an undercover agent, like you said? Nobody knows. So, I, I'm a secret agent, so nobody knows, doctor. Okay, all right, okay. So um, are you sure that you are a secret agent? Yeah, 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 I got these assignments from, 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 from the television and we must, you know, we, we must take over the, the position and, and this lady was one mm -hmm. of them. That's why I shouted to her. So. Robin, 
Now, then please don't mistake me asking, but uh, um, if you allow me asking, that can it be uh, because uh, uh, it is just return of your illness that you had in the past? No, no, no. I'm sure that she is the way she looked at me. So I, I shouted at her to show her that I know that she is one of the opposition and I will not let her uncover my job. All right. Uh, so, Robin, and uh, is, apart from this, uh, do you think that uh, you've got some special powers or energy? No, no, I have a special mission, that's it. Special mission, that's it, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, do you think that something unusual is going around you? Yeah, yeah, they, they are everywhere, these opposition, and I'm worried that, you know, they, they can okay. can know my, my job. I don't want to okay. uncover me. And do you think that they are out to harm you? No, they 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 they, they just know what I uh, if I left them, they can know what what, what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you said that they can know. Uh, do you think that by any chance they are uh, interfering with your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are trained to to do this. They they train to do to read the mind. Mm -hmm. So are they trying to take out your thoughts from your mind? Yes, they want to read my mind and know my job. Okay. And I'm secret and, uh, agent. I, I'm not going to allow them to do this. Robin, I can see that it's a bit tough for you at this moment. So do you think that they are trying to put their thoughts into your mind? No, no, no. It's just okay. I, I, I will not allow anyone to do this. And do you think that you are in control of your emotions, actions? Yeah, I'm, I'm full control of myself. Okay. Robin, I can see um, sometimes when people are uh, distressed, they have some strange experiences like hearing voices, even when no one is around. Is that the case with you? No, no, no. Or uh, do you see something which is not seen by others? No, no, no. All right. Any strange sense of touch? No, no, no. Or taste? No, no. Or smell that you have? No, no. All right. And uh, with all this, uh, uh, do you think that your mind might be playing tricks with you? No, no, no. All right, okay. Uh, what, uh, Ruben, what do you think? Uh, how are you feeling in yourself in general? Oh, I'm feeling good. I don't have any problem. Are you able to enjoy things which you used to enjoy earlier? Yes, yes, everything is good. Okay. Are you sleeping well? Yes, yes, yes. Are you eating okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, Robin, uh, I understand that uh, you have been diagnosed with schizophrenia in the past. Uh, have they prescribed any medications to you? Well, I don't have any problem, doctor. I've stopped taking these medications. And how long have you been uh, not taking these medications? Uh, maybe about three months, four months. Four months. Hmm? Shall I take it that way? No, I stopped taking. I don't, I don't need these medications. So. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, I know that things are not easy for you at this moment. So um, how are you coping? Are you taking alcohol? No, I, you know, when I smoke cannabis, I feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, cannabis, how much are you taking? Maybe five cigarettes a day. And are you taking it every day? Yeah, yeah, every day I take it. It helps me to focus on my mission. And apart from this, are you taking anything else like alcohol or any other street drug? No, no, no. One no, minute remaining. Okay. And uh, is there anyone else who can support you at this moment, Robin? No one, no, no. And uh, do you think that uh, because of all this going on, you will try to harm someone? No, no, no. Or, or yourself by any way? No, no. Okay. Robin, what I think that uh, currently whatever you are experiencing is probably because of return of the schizophrenic illness that you had in past. And uh, this is because you have quit your medications four months back and also you have increased your cannabis intake of late. Will it be okay if I offer you uh, to uh, come to the hospital and... Uh, uh, we try to help you through tablets, talking therapies, and also social support. Okay, no problem. 
Fine. Thanks, Robin. Thanks for talking to me. How do you feel about it? Mashallah. Very good. Very good. Mashallah. Mashallah. Excellent. I don't have any comment. Mashallah. Well, if anyone has any comment for this doctor, so well, you have good luck just to see if someone is experienced. How does he perform? Very good. Anyway, let's have the a look at the. Let's have a look at the. Uh, okay, so. Mashallah. How many times did you go to the exam center? This is the third time I'm going to appear. Good luck. Mashallah. Okay, so as you can, this station has a lot of information in the role players note, but still, you don't, have, you don't have anything in the beginning. Just he has been brought to you by the key worker and he has mild uh, uh, intellectual disability and pay attention to the information that he also has autism. Okay, why do we ask about this? Why this is important? Because you must show some importance to the social part of the patient's life. We know that those who have autism if there is any change in his social circumstances, it can be a sort of disturbance in the, their whole psyche. So how do we start? It started very nice, but if I were you, I would just start to gather some information about his social life, just to make sure that I am not going to miss anything. I'm going to ask him to tell me more about yourself. Okay, how about your life circumstances? Do you have a job, any stresses, any changes lately in your life? Anyone around you to support, okay? And I think the story goes that there has been some changes in his life. I think his dog has died, something like this. So there has been stresses. Um, maybe one of the okay. scenarios is there has been some sort of stresses related to the host. So this is how I start the station. But still, if you do not, if you if you don't want to ask about the social information in the beginning, no problem. But don't forget to ask about if someone has autism. The ask the, the the information about his social life is very important because they have a particular social circumstances which mm -hmm. you should pay attention to. Very good. You ask about the complaint. You ask about the onset, the course, and the duration. Everything was okay. Symptoms of syndrome, it is quite clear that it is psychosis. And you ask, did you ask about the mood? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, physically, you don't ask cover it the physical, but no problem. Uh, impact and coping and risk, you ask about the risk. You ask about the uh, family history and past history. No, yes, no. You, ask, you ask about the past history. Yes. Yeah, the, but not family history. And finally, you delivered it. It was very good, actually, very good. And I don't think it, it's a big deal if you started like, which which I prefer to show my more professor starting by social information just to get, get accustomed to the patient, okay? Because yeah. I know that they are not instructed to talk except if you are so empathetic, you know, and, and show that you are familiar with the patient. Uh, okay, that's why I decided just to uh, advise the, the candidates to start to gather some social information in the beginning to show that they are more empathetic to make the role player more cooperative. Because I get this feedback from the candidates many times that they lose the patient. The patients do not want to talk. The patients do not want to talk. So maybe if we are more empathetic, they, this will make them talk more. Okay, but all in all, it was very good. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so Thank much. You, sir. Very clever. Okay, who would like to go next? Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, we have Nagish. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, doctor. Hi. So, what is your station, though? Uh, body dysmorphic disorder. Okay.
be attention that this station has two scenarios very close to each other. Okay. Two different scenarios, one about the female and one male. This is one scenario. For a few minutes, I will share the other scenario. So do I have to read the first? No, no, the, the, first, the first scenario is enough, but just make sure that it is everything related to the task is the same, but you can have a female role player. And this is her scenario or a male role player, okay? We are doing the first one now, right? Okay. okay, yeah. If the male wants to correct his nose, the female wants to correct their eyes. Okay, so. By the way, we, because I did not record the station of tuberous sclerosis, if someone wants to do it at the end of our uh, session, no problem. We will do it again. If no one wants to do it. Okay, we, I think we will post this Zoom session without any uh, uh, tuberous sclerosis. If someone wants to do the tuberous sclerosis, Please post it on the chat section. Uh, do I address as Mr. X? No, yeah, no, let's say that my name is Mr. Brown. Okay. Ready? Mr. Brown. Are you ready? Yes, doctor. Okay, very good. Excellent. One, two, three, go. Hello, uh, Mr. Brown. I am uh, Dr. Ashwija from the mental health team. Um, I understand from the notes that uh, you referred to us from the uh, GP. Since well, 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 maybe... well, I'm not, I don't want to be rude, doctor, but I'm not okay with this referral. I'm not crazy. I think the problem is very clear to you. Um, I, I don't know why did he refer me here, but I have to go on with the procedures in order to make sure that I will get what I want, but uh, I'm not crazy. Right. Uh, I understand that it's surprising for you to visit a psychiatrist before the procedure that you would like to get. But um, I'd like to let you know that it's not uncommon for uh, the GPs to refer once to the psychiatrist before a, a plastic surgery. So uh, are you comfortable to discuss about that with me? Okay, no problem. So can I ask you for how long have you been um, um, feeling that there's a problem? in the It notes? has been always like this all of my life, but I've decided that, you know, I must take an action. I must, you know, correct this problem. Uh, do you think that this uh, deformity in your nose is uh, getting worse day by day? Well, uh, I, I, well, for me, it is getting worse. Definitely, no one is going to talk about it, but you know, uh, it is very obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, is it distressing you all the more these days? Yes, very distressing, doctor. It's affecting my life. Um, it is uh, understandable that you're having so much distress because of this. Um, can you tell me, do you keep thinking of this all through the day? Yeah, most of the time I'm checking and I'm reading about the possible cosmetic surgeries and I think that I can correct it. Um, how much of your day does this uh, checking behavior and this uh, disturbance stay? Most of the time, but most of the time. That must be very distressing. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me if there's anything else in your body that is also having a, a deformity? Well, well, I think I, you know, my nose is enough. Don't you think this is enough? Can't you see it, doctor? Okay, I'm sorry uh, if that um, made you feel sad. Uh, so I want to know if this problem in your nose is also causing some kind of difficulty in your breathing or any problem in function. No, 
Well, well definitely it's, it's, it's well social functioning. I'm not able to face people. Uh, I work as a taxi driver. This will help me to avoid, you know, face to face mm -hmm. a conversation. Uh, so this must be very difficult for you to uh, face the person having a thought that you have this kind of a deformity. Can you tell me how are you uh, compensating with this? Are you trying to do some special kind of hairstyles and trying to cover it or something? Yeah, I try to put a mask, you know, um, but, but uh, you know, but this is the only thing which can cover my nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, do you also keep checking repeatedly in front of the mirror? Yes, yes, yes. How has this affected your um, relationships in general? Uh, well, I, I, well, I think my girlfriend left me because of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, can I ask you how the people around you feel about this particular problem? Well, well nobody is going to talk about it, you know, nobody's going to mm -hmm. you know, say to me that your, your, your nose look deformed, but, okay. but I, I see it though. Okay, but have you ever checked with anyone like what it seems like for them? What? Have you ever checked with anyone like maybe your uh, your parent or friend like? How well, well this is my decision. I want to check it with the plastic surgeon. That's why I went to the GP. He said that he doesn't see any deformity, but I said to him that I think the, the, the plastic surgeon can give us a better uh, opinion. Did that even for a second make you feel comfortable that, uh, okay, there's not much of a problem because it's a professional who's saying that? What? what? Did you even for a second feel reassured because a professional told you that there's no problem in your nose. Well, I think uh, I, I, I think I have also my opinion. It is very obvious, doctor. So uh, I don't know how come he will say something otherwise. Uh, okay. So can you tell me how this entire problem has affected your mood in general? Well, I, I'm so distressed, doctor, because of how my 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 the shape of my nose is, is is really distressing me. It makes me look it makes me look ugly, though. Do you sometimes uh, get thoughts of taking entire thing in your own hands if the plastic surgeon does not uh, choose to operate? I don't know, that, that, no, I, 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 no, definitely, because this will add more to the disfigurement. Uh, but definitely, I will, uh, I will seek another opinion. That's uh, that's good to know. So, um, have you ever felt that it's better not to live if this is continuing? No, no, no. Okay. One um, minute remaining. I just want to check with you if. Uh, uh, you've ever been using alcohol or any other substances? No, no. Okay. Um, can I also check with you if there are any unusual experiences like hearing voices or something that interferes your thoughts? No, no. Has there been any time in the past when uh, any kind of mental disturbance uh, happened in life? No, no. Anything as such in the family? No. Okay. Any medical uh, complaints that you had? No. No. Okay. So it's, uh, what I understand from the entire picture is that you uh, probably suffer with what you what is called as body dysmorphic dysmorphic disorder, where a person has more preoccupation on the problem than it's supposed to be. Okay. How do you feel about what you did? Uh, I lost my sister in the beginning and then I realized I don't have much time. So, uh, okay, so let's see. You asked, you answered the question of why am I seeing a psychiatrist in, very, in a very good way. Uh, when, I, when I said, when someone has a problem since early childhood, ask two questions. Uh, anything happened in the childhood where you were and in the childhood, okay, so pay attention to this. And, and, and if you dig more, you will know that he has been bullied in the school about the shape of his nose and so on. 
And the second question is right, you want to know what happened recently. So this problem has been on, going on with him all his life from his perspective. So what happened recently? So recently he has been separated from his girlfriend. So this is related to the answer. Okay, so what happened recently? Okay. Um, and the last thing is that you should ask about, you know that the body dysmorphic disorder is one of the anxiety disorders. So ask him if he is angry, that does minor life events makes him uh, more anxious and he is on the edge because the, of these trivial events. Okay, ask him if he has a very common to have, those who have body dysmorphic disorders also can have obsessive compulsive disorders. Okay, let's see. A bit more empathy, yeah. Yes. Very clever, Ojo. Very clever. Okay, let's see according to this. So this is a very common question. He will not be happy talking with you. He wants to go to a uh, to a, uh, a plastic surgeon. Expect that he will be a bit defensive in the beginning. So justify this conversation, which you did very cleverly. And then you ask him, uh, can you tell me more about the problem which or which he wants to go to? Let him talk about. Okay. And then you want to know if he, anyone sharing with him, the current situation, anyone sharing this opinion with him? Uh, did you do any cosmetic uh, evaluation? Since when did this start the onset? And is it increasing? And before the onset, okay. So here you are going to check for the uh, childhood and the recent events which might provoke the desire to change the shape of his nose. Now, the problem is that, okay, body just what I'm what what am I going to ask about the the, the body dysmorphic disorder? So this is the problem with many of the candidates. They, they don't know exactly what they are going to ask about. So as we always say, if you want to understand and evaluate any psychological phenomenon, you are going to dissect it into thinking, feeling and behavior and also childhood, if there is a plan, a place for the child. Okay, so thinking, you want to know what are his thoughts, if he is preoccupied by the shape of his nose, okay, uh, how much he's convinced with this, okay, if the plastic surgeon tells him that he, there is no nothing wrong with his nose, uh, will, his, will he accept this decision? So this is all in the place of thinking, so, and then the feeling, you want to know how much he is distressed because of this problem and if he lost confidence because of it. And then his behavior. What does he do because of this problem? Okay, he will you'll find that he's avoiding okay, and checking, avoiding and checking. Okay, and then ask him about the, the childhood, if he, has, if he has been exposed to bullying or anything. Is it okay, doctor? So any, any, any psychological phenomenon in psychiatry has asked our, our, our thinking, feeling, behavior, and the childhood definitely will come up with enough information to consider that you covered the symptoms in depth. Any psychological fraud, okay? Very clever. So then you ask about the comorbidity. Now, we know that there are some routine questions for the comorbidity, but sometimes we need to add some more questions because we know that this body dysmorphic disorder is a one of the anxiety disorders. So you want to know, ask him a bit, two or more, two or three questions about the anxiety disorders if he is having generalized anxiety disorder questions about the phobias and one question about or two questions about the OCD, which is very common with body dysmorphic disorder. The OCD is common with body dysmorphic disorder. Other than this, the routine questions, which we all know around about the mood and psychosis, the social, the physical, 
and then in the assessment of the impact and coping and risk, as I always say, these are typical questions, past history, family history, and finally delivering the diagnosis, say that it is a body dysmorphic disorder and it is one of the anxiety disorders. Are you with me, doctor? Yes. Any question? Okay. It is not uncommon, by the way. And, um, and, and there are differences between the body dysmorphic disorder for the females and males. Okay, so you can now refresh your memory about some of these images. Don't go through the textbooks. Very clever, though. So, have you ever been to the CASC before? No, it is my first time. For, for the first time, it is very good. But be, try to be more confident because one of the colleagues said that you are very. Uh, formal, non-empathetic, this is because of your anxiety. Just, just smile, okay, just make it. And this will come with practice. Yeah. Very clever, Michelle. Who would like to go next? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yes, Dr. Dimiano. How are you, doctor? Yeah, I'm fine. So what is your station, doctor? Uh, weight gain and psychosocial history. Yeah, very, very common station. And very long as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll take three to four. Can you see it? I think you can. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, doctor, I can start. I can start now. This is the same as, as present in SPMM. Okay, no problem. So just okay. give a few minutes for the doctors to read the station. If you are very clever, just give them a few minutes to read, uh, read the station. You ready? Yeah, doctor. Okay. Let's say that now my name is uh, Michael. One, two, Michael. three, four. Good afternoon, Mr. Michael. I'm Damiana, a psychiatrist of mental health team. How are you? I'm fine, doctor. I'm fine, but you know, this overweight problem is troubling me. And I've discussed this with the GP, said that I must talk with you because it is due to the medications and I want to change these medications. Yeah, I'm sorry. It seems that you passed through a tough time. Could you tell me more about your problem, please, Mr. Michael? As you can see, I'm an I'm overweight doctor. So uh, it's all because mm -hmm. of these medications. And, and mm -hmm. uh, he said that I cannot, he cannot change it because it is your speciality. That's why I'm referred here. And I would like to change these medications, doctor. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Michael, when did you start to notice that you begin to gain weight? Well, after starting my medication, they gave me something called metazepine. This was about mm -hmm. three, and when did you start? three months ago. Three months ago. Uh, and why did the doctor prescribe you metazepine? Did you struggle uh -huh. with anything at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some low mood and also bad sleep. And 
He gave mm. this mat therapy. Well, my mood became better and I'm sleeping well, but I gained weight actually. I'm sorry for that tough time you passed through. So you, you found mirtazapine helped you in your mood and yeah, you were yeah. asleep. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You noticed that it, you, you gained some weight. Could you tell me how much weight did you gain recently? Well, maybe uh, in three months I gained uh, 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms. So what's your current weight? My current weight is 120 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And all through your life, what, what was your average body weight? Well, I, you know, I've been a rugby player, so it has always been 80 kilograms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand from the notes that you, you were treated for bipolar affective yeah. disorder. Yes, and you yes. told me that the doctor started you on mirtazapine. Did you take any yeah. other medication from mirtazapine? Uh, I'm taking uh, something called well, pray something. Uh, yeah, yeah. And how do you find it? It is very but helpful, but you know, sometimes I get low mood. So they mm -hmm. give me metazapine, I get high mood, they increase the dose of uh, uh, valproate. It's going on mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. You told me that you, you, you were low in mood and not, currently you are better and you sleep well. Um, yeah. Why do you think that mirtazapine lead to increasing your weight? Because after, uh, after taking it, uh, I gained weight. Uh, it all started after mirtazapine. Did it do something special you noticed? No, no, no. Just, just uh, it you helped me, that it but, but, I, uh, but it made me, made me gain weight. Did it increase your appetite, for example? Yeah, yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how could you describe your energy level at the moment? Well, um, well, I, I, energy is the same. Um, I don't have anything mm -hmm. which... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, Mr. Michael, there are different causes that make people may gain weight. Let me double check with you to see how we can go forward later on to help yeah. you in a better way. Is that okay? Um, could you tell me about your dietary habits? What kind of food do you prefer to eat? Or do well, you I'm a computer technician, and so I don't yeah. have time to cook. So whatever on the you know bakery menu I buy, not the best mm -hmm. food to eat, but this is an available thing for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and what about your physical activity? You told me that you are a computer technician. Yeah. So could you tell me more about your physical activity? Well, I don't have a lot of physical activities sitting most of the time. Yeah, is there any reason behind that? Because I'm a computer technician, I'm, I don't, I must mm -hmm. be sitting. Did you practice any type of exercise? No, no. Mm -hmm. And what about smoking? Yeah, I smoke about a pack of cigarettes every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you drink alcohol? No. Or taking any recreational drugs? No, no, no. Mr. Michael, um, do you have any family member who struggle with the same problem as well? Yeah, my sister and my mother were a bit overweight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, did anyone struggle with any medical condition? Yeah, my mother had heart problems and my sister had high blood sugar level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How could you see, Mr. Michael, all of that may affect your life? How could you find this increase in weight? Well, I, I, I have to be honest with you. I feel less confident because of this overweight and, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, you know, even what I'm wearing is not suitable. And, uh, mm -hmm. I feel I'm stuck mm -hmm. and this medication made it, uh, everything worse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and how could you see? Um, do you see yourself in a problem due to this increase in weight? Yeah, 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 definitely. That's why I'm, you know, I, I just yeah. noticed from your notes that there's an increase in your blood tests in some yeah. in your blood sugar. Yeah, yeah. And that you feel that you are in a problem because um, it will help you. One to minute take remaining. Yeah. So to what extent you are motivated, Mr. Michael, to, to take a step toward 
Well, I'm, we, I, 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 I'm very, very, I want to change definitely my life because, you know, one hundred and twenty yeah, years and I've never been like this before. And, and maybe, maybe, you know, changing the medication, which helps me, uh, will help me. So that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's right. The medication may be the reason behind this increase in your body weight, but there is other different reasons, like your dietary habits. Um, uh, you didn't practice any type of exercise and you have a sedentary life as well. So I will be happy to arrange for further meetings, especially that you are motivated to take steps from your side to discuss the possible lines that will help you later on to decrease in your weight. Like, for example, referral to a smoking cessation clinic, um, referral to a dietitian, which advise you to wear a healthy diet. Time, 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 time. How do you feel about what you did? Still, I have a problem in time management with this station. Really, the quiet, mashallah. <laughs> so, are you, you didn't ask about the fizzy drinks. Uh, don't talk about the management. Uh, don't say that, the right, it is because the medications. The medications do not make the patients gain weight. Actually, the weight is gained because the lifestyle changes which they adopt. And maybe the medications make them more sedentary. That's why it makes the lifestyle more prone to develop weight. But many yeah. patients take the Liponex, they take Zyprex, so they don't gain weight. Okay? They make them more prone to the sedentary life and uh, that's why they gain weight. So when he says to you, uh, it is, you just say that's right. No, don't say that's right. Say that there are many factors behind this. Okay, stopping mm -hmm. the medication is not the best option. There are many factors in your life which can be changed to help changing uh, uh, the weight in a positive way, but don't they say that's right, okay? It's not professional. Okay, so let's see. Um, um, according to our, this. Okay, so. Yes, this, uh, I don't know why this station also is one of the stations which the candles do not find it easy. Okay, so first thing you want to make sure of is that the eating habits is sensitive issue. So take permission. I understand that you are understanding your concerns, but in order to take the right decision, I would like to ask you some personal questions about the weight and eating habits. Uh, is it okay? That's it. So pay attention to this. And then the current situation, you take the complaint in an organized way, the current situation, you want to know what is the current situation now? What is his current weight? Okay. How much weight did he gain? And then the answer, since when did he start to gain weight? And you will pay attention to that. He feels that he started to gain weight after metazepine, but when he started to gain weight, after taking mirtazepine, he was already overweight. I, I, I was 110, so pay attention, highlight this, so I can see that before taking mirtazepine, there has been also a problem with weight. Pay attention to this, this man has been, in, has been leading a life which makes him overweight. And before the onset, you want to, so it started three months ago. So how was he doing before that? Is there been any stresses? And very important to ask him, is it the first time for him to gain weight like this? And what is his ideal weight? Okay, then symptoms of the syndrome. We have here the uh, bipolar mood disorder. Okay, this is the only syndrome which we have. You are, the, the task is the psycho. Social. So the psychological problem here is the bipolar mood disorder. Uh, did you ask me about this, the, the, the bipolar mood disorder, the sleeping hours yeah, I, and the I, energy? I, 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 and no, mood? not all of them. Yeah. No, ask I asked it about energy. Um, no, no, no. And, this, is, this is important. You should ask me about this is psychosocial. So the first thing, so how was how is your mood? You want to know exactly what is the, the, the mood now? Is it either depressed or high? I energy? reflect in your words. 
uh, I reflect on your words that uh, you have improved as regard your mood after taking mirtazabin and um, the sleeping become well. And I asked it later on about the energy level. I don't know it's enough or I ah, have okay, to ask okay. more. Okay, then the comorbidity. Ask about the, the comorbidity here. Here is the place which you are going to check for the psychosocial information, the social part of the task. We know the comorbidity with the comorbidity, the uh, other problems in other is other areas of its life. Psychological is already covered, so you have social and uh, medical. So the social, you want to know about the sleeping hours. Very important to ask about the sleeping hours. It is not uncommon that people who have uh, sleep problems also have uh, weight problems. Uh, physically, you ask about the physical activity and do, ask about fizzy drinks. Don't forget the fizzy drinks, not only alcohol, okay? This is something which you forgot. Very important to ask about the fizzy drinks. And you ask about the medical, very clever. Okay, but pay attention also that you should ask about if you want to show that you are professional and you know the thyroid problems. Thyroid problems are commonly associated with uh, with the, uh, the the weight problem is commonly associated with the thyroid problems. Okay, impact coping and risk. You ask about them. Uh, past history and family history. You ask about them. And finally, delivering the diagnosis was very good that it is not only the medication, there are several factors in his life okay, which can be behind this very clear. Okay. Um, that's it. It's very clever, mashallah, Dr. Dimian. Very clever. Thank you. Thank you, doctors. Thank you. Who would like to go next? May I? Yeah, no problem. So what is your station, Dr. Uh, transsexualism. Pay attention to this because it is the era of this transsexual. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. So. Again, doctors, uh, we can repeat the tuberous sclerosis station. If anyone wants to do this station, write his name in the chat section. Ready? Okay. Um, good morning. My name is Dr. Noah Ismail. I'm one of the psychiatrists from the mental health team. Uh, I'm here to help you, but firstly, uh, may I ask, how would you like me to call you? You can call me Simon. Okay, Simon. Um, to my information, you had been referred by your GP because of some sort of hormonal therapy that you want to receive. Is it convenient well, for you uh, uh, to doctor, talk to I'm me more? I'm not crazy. I'm not happy with this. Uh, why am I talking to a psychiatrist? Yes, it's it's just it's it's just part of uh, a routine assessment that um, anyone who wants to receive hormonal therapy to change or uh, his gender have to go through. Um, you just have to talk with a psychiatrist first. 
Okay, no problem. Uh, is that okay for you? Okay. Okay. Uh, could you talk to me more about what happened? Well, I, 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 as I said to the GP, I want to change uh, my gender. I want to take uh, estrogen, and this will help me to to be my real self. Okay, and um, how long have you been feeling that you're not your real self? It has been always like this. I feel that I am a female trapped in a male body. Okay, and um, and ever since you started feeling like this, have those feelings kind of been the same or have they changed in any way? No, it's always like this. Okay, and um, ever since you realized that, uh, what did you change about your life? What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, um, have you maybe changed your name or the way you dress? Yeah, yeah, I've changed. I've changed officially my name, and now I want to change everything also to be in line with my new identity, real identity. Okay. Um, have you changed the way you get dressed? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to ask a personal question, but um, do you get sexually aroused when you get dressed like a woman? No, no. no. Okay. And um, do you feel like you want to dress like a woman um, all the time or just for a temporary period? No, it's all the time. Okay. Um, may I ask, Simon? Um, do you, does your family and friends know about that? Yes, everyone knows that I prefer to be like this. Okay, and how did they react to that? Well, some, some of them accepted this, some other people did not accept, but you know, it's me, I, I'm not going to change my, myself. Okay. And uh, what exactly do you expect from receiving that hormonal therapy, Simon? Well, I prefer, I, I expect to be my real self. As I said, this body is trapping my real identity. I mean, I, I just want to make sure that you do realize that those changes won't, will be uh, irreversible. Are you aware of that? Yeah, yeah, I've read something like this. Okay, and um, are you aware of the adverse effects that might happen to you? Well, I I'm ready to take the risk. Okay. Um, thinking back when you were a child, um, did you feel like more of a boy or more of a girl? I've been always like this doctor. I preferred to, uh, to play with the, the girls and dress like girls and everything. Okay. And um, going through puberty, um, we experience a lot of changes. Um, it could be hard time for some. Uh, how was that time for you? Well, it was very difficult, very, very difficult time because I, I feel that at this, I felt that my body is changing towards the, the direction which I don't want. Yeah, how did you feel about that change in your body back then? I was not happy at all. Okay. Um, have you had any relationships back then? Well, I have a relationship now. And I feel that it will be more smooth and more in line with its nature if I change my identity. Okay. Um, may I ask, Simone, whether you have any medical illnesses? No, no. Okay. Do you have any chromosomal abnormalities? Excuse me? Okay. I mean, whether you have any genetic disorder. I don't understand. Okay. Um, have, you, have you had any tests for your genes? I, I don't understand what you are talking about. Okay. Um, May I ask, um, with all that, with all the changes you have been going through, how has your mood been? Well, I'm very frustrated that I feel that I am trapped in a 
the different body. Okay, um, I'm really sorry about that. Um, um, how have you been sleeping? Have you been sleeping well? Yeah, I'm sleeping well, but you know, it's, my life is difficult, not when I'm sleeping, but when I'm awake, one minute cleaning. Okay, have you been eating well? Yes. Do you have any unusual experiences, like maybe hearing someone's voices no. or whispers? No. Okay. Um, have you had any thoughts about maybe harming yourself or ending your life? No, no, no. Okay. Any thoughts about harming someone else? No. Okay. Um, uh, from what I have gathered, um, I think you are going through what we call transsexualism. Are you uh, familiar with the term? No, what is transsexualism? It's when someone is uh, uncomfortable with their anatomical body and um, feeling all the time that they should belong to the other sex. And uh, I, do, I do recommend that you seek uh, help from specialized doctors before yes. you make any permanent change. Is that okay? Okay, time. How do you feel about what you okay. did? Um, I, I okay. I think I was disorganized at the beginning, maybe, or I just they, they bring these particular stations, and uh, the issue is that, as you can see, a lot of sensitive questions, and usually the lady doctors find it difficult to go in depth with these questions, and in general, it is not a very comfortable station for the Middle East candidates. That's why I highly recommend that you practice it several times. In this station, you're, you're going to get someone who is acting as a female, not like me. I'm, I'm just saying the words, but someone who is dressing as a female and acting like a female, and they expect from you to deal with him professionally, and this can be a bit challenging because we're not accustomed to this type of presence, okay? Uh, number two, you must pay attention that in the very first beginning, you must say that I would like to take permission. Just I'm going to ask you some personal questions just to know more about your experience. So the permission should be very first in the very early. Um, the, I don't know why did you ask about chromosomal and genes? So what? why did you ask these questions? I just read it in uh, Birmingham. No, the, the, but they, it will be considered jargon, please. Don't, don't do it. Don't say it, okay? Yes. Let's see the feedback of our colleagues. Can I go for the two with Santosh? Okay, Dr. Santosh. So let's see the... Um, okay, so... Introduction. So it was like uh, very good that you asked me how would I call you when I uh, challenge you. I'm not crazy. You justified that before taking the hormonal therapy. It is a good. It is a part of the medical practice to talk to a psychiatrist. Now the complaint is always like uh, like what we always know: the current situation, the onset, the course. And before the onset, here, the, before the onset, there is nothing before the onset. It has been always going on for her life, in his life, okay? And then you want to know the symptoms of the syndrome again. You want to know the feelings, the behavior and the thinking feelings. How does he feel towards his body, okay? Um, he will feel that all his body is not, he is not comfortable with it. He wants to change all of his body. There is no particular part which he is comfortable with. Feelings towards the females and males. This is very important to establish that it is a gender problem. So he must what what he is saying towards his body should also be reflected on his uh, you know, his, his his feelings towards whether he's female or male. So I beg your pardon, but uh, may I know how do you feel towards the females, any sexual attraction towards the females? If he is sexually attracted to the females, this will put a question mark. And then how about the males? Do you feel attracted towards the males? Okay. And you want to know if this is always what he feels. 
if it changes from time to time and it has been always like this or has been always lately, he decided to just be interested in males, something else. And you want to know his behavior now. So this is how he feels, you know, he feels towards his body, how he feels towards the, the females and the males and his behavior. So what is his behavior because of this problem? Does what you feel towards your body affect how you dress and socialize? Do you feel sexual excitement in dress? The question which you did, and if he has taken any official uh, steps to change his identity. Have you ever had a girlfriend? Okay, so his behavior, he should always have someone like him should not have a girlfriend. His behavior should always be inclined towards having a girl, a boyfriend. And now he's thinking, thinking is now whether he understand the problem which he did, okay? That he must know that there are some irreversible changes which might happen, okay? And the effect of this is on his bones and body. And very important to ask about the child. You ask about the child. So again, how to assess the, uh, the, 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 the phenomenon of transgender or gender identity disorder as we said, you dissect this phenomenon into feelings, behavior, thinking, and childhood. Any psychological phenomenon, if you dissect it into these four items, definitely will have enough information, but pay attention that you should organize and you know what are the questions which you are going to put under each, each heading. And then the comorbidity, the routine questions, the comorbidity, the mood, the thinking, okay? The social information is very important. Social life is very important in this problem, okay? Very important. And very important question, what would happen? Well, one of the patient, this is a, one of the experience of one of our doctors. He did, uh, you know, uh, apply it on himself and he uh, amputated his organ. So you want to know what would happen if your request is denied? Any plans to hurt yourself? Very important question, okay? Past history and family history. And then finally, why, what, 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 well, it is not a disorder now, so I don't know, it's a transient, so don't say it is a gender identity disorder. It is not, a dis not considered to be a disorder. Just say, I would like to have another talk with you to see how we can, help you, okay? It is not considered as a disorder. It is, they are totally legitimate to do whatever they want to do in the body. So just don't say gender identity disorder. Just say that uh, I would like to see uh, you again to see how you, you can help, okay? Don't say disorder. It's not disorder, <laughs> okay? I said transsexualism, is that okay? Transsexualism, okay, no problem. But don't say gender identity disorder. Okay, thank you so much. I hope that you found it helpful, thank very you. clever. All very, all very right. helpful, thank you, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Santosh, you would like to do the next station? Gender incongruence, yeah, just something which just, Nobody will understand that gender incongruence. Okay. That's what they're described in ICD. Gender incongruence. Okay. Yeah. ICD 11, especially. Okay. So you are going to do the tuberous sclerosis station? I think. Yeah, the, actually, uh, I'm not aware of that, but uh, let me try. Okay. Here it is.
Okay. Ready? Yeah. Whom I am going to talk actually? You are going to talk to his father, Mr. Brown. Okay. One, two, three, go. Hello, Mr. Brown. I'm Dr. Kumar, one of the mental health doctors. How are you doing today? Well, I'm fine. Mr. Brown, I'm, I understand that uh, you and your family are quite distressed at this moment because uh, Robin is having some issues related to his behavior, like he's biting himself and he's injuring himself. Please don't worry, we are here to help. But uh, before doing that, we'll, we'll need to understand more about Robin. So uh, will it be okay if we have uh, a chat about that? Yeah, yeah, no problem. no problem. Okay. So can you please tell me more about his difficulties? Well, his behavior has changed, doctor. He is biting himself and, and, it's, and, and, and you know, throwing things. It's not his usual. We know that, yes, he's been a bit active. He's an active child in, in general, but lately, three months ago, he, he's changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can you please tell me more about the changes that you saw three months back? As I tell you, he became more aggressive, he bites himself, and he is more clumsy, just hitting the kids around him. That's why the school said we must talk to a psychiatrist. Okay, you said that he has become aggressive. Uh, is he showing the aggression without any reason, or is it no, for no, any no, no, nothing, nothing happened, just no, no okay. reason. As far as I know. And uh, did it once back when things started? Well, everything was fine. Anything in particular you want to ask about? Uh, like, uh, did he have any fever? No, no, he didn't have any. High grade fever, I mean? Uh, no. Any fits at that moment? No, no, no. Okay. And uh, did he have any head injury at the moment? No, no, no. Okay, thanks for telling me this. And apart from this, uh, is there anything else also which is concerning you at the moment uh, while observing him? Like what? Uh, like uh, any any changes in his uh, his body? Well, physical. He you know he has some physical problems. You know. Can you please tell me more about that? He has been diagnosed with the with tuberous sclerosis. And when was that? It's been always all of his life. Okay, all right. So, uh, does he have any skin changes also? Yeah, yeah, it's very obvious on his face and back. Mm -hmm. And uh, has there been any fits too? Yes, he is having seizures, but he's taking Tigritol for it. All right. And uh, is he taking his medications regularly? Yes, yes, he's taking medications regularly. Okay. Has there been any changes in his, uh, um, I mean, your uh, family, like uh, um, anyone coming in or anyone going out? No, no, no. All right. And uh, has he experienced any major uh, medical illness of late? Not as far as I know, though. Uh, um, anything like uh, um, uh, he's experiencing uh, any pain while uh, urinating? No, no, no or uh, any cough or cold that he had? No, no. All right, okay. And uh, mm, uh, I'll, I'd like to understand uh, more about uh, how, how uh, means uh, uh, about his early life. So was there any problem while uh, uh, your wife was pregnant with him? No, no, no. Okay, any, any issues around delivery? No, no. All right. And, uh, and uh, how did it, uh, let me have some understanding about how it developed as a child. So did he walk on time? No, no he was delayed actually in walking and talking. Mm -hmm. And was, were there any concerns related to his language? Yes, he can hardly express himself. He just few mm -hmm. words. Okay. And uh, how about his general understanding uh, uh, no, no, he, he does. He, well, he is in a private school for special mm -hmm. needs. Okay, special needs. And uh, how is he doing academically? Uh, I'd ask. What? Yeah, how is he doing in studies? If I uh, well, well, I well, the special needs, you know, they don't start. They just give them care. It's not 
school, typical school. And so on. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Brown. Let me understand uh, if he let me uh, understand if he's having any other illness. Like, kind of, uh, do you find him uh, frigidity always? He's active, yeah, active, very active, yeah. Do you find him very restless at times? Sometimes, yes. And uh, does he do something uh, out of impulse? To some extent, he's impulsive, but you know, but it, it has increased lately. All right. And uh, um, do you see that uh, uh, um, he tends to do things in spur of moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. All right. And has there been any issues in which uh, he has been involved with uh, law or, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, damaging property? No, he is a kid, but, you know, he's clumsy, so he hurts himself. Sometimes he hurts mm -hmm. the other kids. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, I know that it's not been easy for you and your family. How has it impacted your family? Well, well, we don't know, doctor. It is very difficult to take care of him now. We bring for him a nanny, but she says that mm -hmm. she cannot take care of him. He needs extra care. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of how many siblings does he have? Well, only one sibling, that's it. One, one minute remaining. Oh. All right. So, um, uh, are there any safety concerns to like uh, apart from his biting himself? Is is he biting your you people? Yes, he he did bite one of the kids in the school. That's why we were asked to talk to psychiatrist. That's concerning. And uh, is he trying to harm himself? Sometimes he head bang. He, he hit his head. Yes. Or anyone else in a, any other way other than biting? No. 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 All right, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I understand uh, that uh, you know, what Robin is going through is uh, uh, some escalation of uh, the tuberous sclerosis that he already had. Some behavioral symptoms have returned for him. Uh, please don't worry. Help is available in form of tablets, talking therapy, and the social support that we have at uh, our CAMS cl clinic. So will that be okay if uh, I request you to come down to our clinic with, along with your son? Okay. For more thanks. assessments, I mean. Okay. okay thanks for thank speaking. You. Very good. Thank, thank you. Thank. How do you feel about what you did? I had no clue. <laughs> no, you did fine. How did you feel about? Uh... Yeah, I I had to read the diagnosis. So you said the diagnosis about uh, tuberous sclerosis. What else yeah, did yeah. I have to dig in? But, but pay attention that, yes, there has been escalation. He has a medical problem, and but you should ask if he has any painful condition. Painful mm -hmm. conditions make those who have intellectual problems more aggressive because they have pain, they cannot express it, so uh, they, they be, become more frustrated. This is the first thing. And the second thing, if you want to ask if he has any uh, if there has been any changes in the circumstances around him, because those who have autism, those who have tuberous sclerosis also have autism, autistic uh, uh, features. So mm. changes in the circumstances around them make them also more uh, frustrated and they can be uh, violent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see our PDF. Okay, see you. So, okay, so this is the PDF. Again, so you want to know the first thing, the complaint, okay. Can you tell me more about his behavior? And the onset, when did it start? Anything happened at this time? Mm -hmm. Is it increasing, the course increasing or decreasing? And then before the onset, how was he doing before that? You want to, because this is how you show that you know there is something called predisposing impersonating factors. Mm -hmm. You will never show that you are a type of professional and, and and from my experience with the, the Royal College that they are focusing now on these issues perpetuating factors perpetuating factors you know 
predisposing factors, the candidates who pay attention to these factors are the candidates who have a higher edge and they can pass. Okay, so you want to know before the onset, how was he doing before that? And if you ask this, you will pick up that there has been some sort of physical problems, okay? Now, you want to know the symptoms of syndrome. Now, we, we, you are not supposed to diagnose the tuberous sclerosis, but you should, must show that it is associated with some psychological phenomenon which can be behind this, okay? The ADHD, okay, difficulties in the learning difficulties, the autistic features. He might have seizures, okay? He might have eye vision problems which make him more clumsy, okay? Uh, skin lesions, if you want to ask about them, it's okay. Lung and kidney problems, you want to know if he has any medical problems related to going to the bathroom or any problem because show the examiner that there can be a medical problem behind the this physical symptoms because he already has this tubular sclerosis which can cause kidney and lung problems. Very important, if he's a child, the symptoms of the syndrome must include how does he play and the developmental history, okay? Very important to ask about these two points whenever you want to assess the psychological problem in any child, which you did. How mm -hmm. does he play? He did not ask about the how does he play. No, I did not ask about the... Ask about the development. Yeah. yeah. And then know. ask about the routine questions. If there is <coughs> any other associated problems, if psychosis, if he is looking sad, Interested. So this can be associated secondary to psychosis, frustration, depression, physical. If he has any painful condition, doctor, don't forget this. The children, when they are in pain, they can be aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Any recent changes in his life circumstances? Very important to show that you know that the recent changes can affect him negatively because. He has some autistic traits. You ask about the impact in coping with risk in a very good way. The past history, well, very important. Just show that because the tuberous sclerosis is an autosomal dominant, so there can be a big possibility that there can be another family member with this problem. Show the exam examiner that he knows this, that that there could be a possibility that there can be another family. And finally, you deliver the diagnosis in a very good way. Everything was okay. Very clever doctors. Thank you so much. I hope that you all found it helpful. This will be the last Zoom session regarding the history taking. We have covered so far maybe 40 stations. The next session, Zoom session, will be the management task. I hope that you all find it helpful. Good luck. Hope to see all your names in the post list. Have a good night. Bye-bye.